And uh, I want to say a couple words about Compelling Technologies and, and our partnership with them as VMware. They've been a great storage partner of ours, have a number of customers together, a number of partners, and we really like working with, uh, with them to drive value to our overall uh, customers and solution set. The, um, uh, that we announced yesterday at VMware, at VMware 2010, is that uh, for every dollar of license revenue that VMware sells, we, our partners or our ecosystem is able to add on or to drag with that $15 of ecosystem revenue. And the Compellent folks are a great example of a, a partnership with VMware where our solutions work well together and we do some exciting things. We're going to hear from uh, for the president and CEO of, of Compellent. Uh, and one of their customers. But before we do, one of my favorite uh, twists of this press conference is uh, a differentiation of Compellent is the fluid data architecture. And I think it's somewhat ironic after last night's beer crawls at uh, VMworld 2010 that Heineken happens to be the customer on stage. So I'm sure there's uh, a story there and I would uh, like to introduce Phil Soren, the president and CEO of Compellent, to uh, uh, tell us about the company and uh, about the Heineken beer crawls. Great, uh, Todd, thanks a lot. We're just thrilled to be up here on stage with you, being participating in the uh, fantastic show you have in uh, operation here at Moscone in San Francisco, and we're thrilled to have a joint announcement with our customer Heineken here, and to have them come over from the Netherlands to share the excitement with us. But um, let me tell you a little bit about Compellent. We're a uh, data storage company. Uh, we have the fluid data architecture. We've been uh, really the innovator. If you look at primary storage innovation over the last decade, things like thin provisioning, uh, Sub-LUN, automated tiered storage, uh, tiering disk platters, uh, flexible volumes, portable volumes, thin provisioning. You look at all those types of innovations over the last decade that storage has come out in, Compellent has been the leader in that whole space. And uh, I think we've been able to get ahead of some of the incumbent vendors with our innovation and we've been really fast growing. We grew about 38% year over year last year. We're the f uh, one of the fastest growing sand vendors in the world and uh, we're hoping to keep that growing. We have about 2,100 customers in uh, 34 countries, Heineken being a good example in the Netherlands. Uh, of those customers there, they're running their mission critical enterprise applications on us for their worldwide operations. And uh, uh, I would say of, of the 2,100, about 2,090 of them are also running some form of VMware. So this partnership with VMware is very, very important to us and uh, we're, we're real excited about it. Uh, talk a little bit about our patented technology. We call it the fluid data architecture and we thought no better customer to do a joint press conference with on our fluid data architecture than Heineken. So uh, the ultimate fluid data architecture is the combination of Heineken and Compellent. And uh, our system is so easy to use that you can actually enjoy a Heineken while you're a storage administrator. So <laughs> we, 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 we like that there. So uh, Heineken Netherlands is our, our customer here. We have uh, Mike Robers and uh, Lucien de Koenig, and uh, we're real excited to hear about their story. They're part of a global enterprise of customers we talked about. We have customers in all industries, verticals, uh, 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 geographic areas. We're announcing actually this week, we're announcing our expansion of our Australian operations where we have dozens of customers already, but we're uh, announcing the expansion of our Australian operations. And now let's take it back to the Netherlands and let's hear a, a real customer story about how VMware Compellent can really uh, cut the, the total cost of ownership in a data center by more than 50% with a combination of our two efforts and also improve the operational uh, efficiency of those data centers. And let's hear uh, Mike and Lucian to tell us a little bit about it. Great, thank you very much, Phil. I guess I don't have to introduce uh, Heineken as a company itself because we all know what the core business of our company is, brewing beer. Uh, and not only the beer, we, great, uh, we brew great beers and great brands. And that makes us the number one brewer in uh, Europe and the number three uh, in volume in uh, the complete uh, worldwide. Uh, we have over 200 regional and local uh, beers and ciders uh, in total. And uh, when we look uh, at our breweries, we have almost in every country, uh, we have a brewery or it's uh, Heineken is deliverable. Um, when we look at the, uh, uh, the interna Heineken International, uh, we're a very large company, almost in every country, as I just said before. And we have uh, 130, brew 140 breweries in uh, more than 70 countries. Uh, which uh, is uh, good for a group beer volume of 200 uh, million hectoliters of beer a year. Uh, this includes the ciders. Uh, when we look at the, uh, the Netherlands, we have uh, only uh, three breweries. That's where it all started. Uh, we have uh, 18 million hectoliters of uh, uh, total supply. 
but we're not drinking it all ourselves. <laughs> The uh, domestic market is only about 5 million hectoliters and the rest uh, of the, 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 the volume is going to uh, the USA. So uh, it's all export for us and that's where all your beer is coming from. <laughs> A nice touch is that uh, we've introduced uh, Heineken Light several years ago. That's especially made for the USA market because uh, we don't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, when you take a look at the uh, virtualization roadmap for Heineken, we started about uh, six years ago in 2004. VMware was the only uh, real player in the market at the moment. Uh, we introduced it when we were, uh, were consolidating our data centers in our main location, Zutewoude. Uh, we came from about 12 server rooms to one uh, major data center, uh, which we used uh, storage from HP at the moment, and we used the HP uh, Blades infrastructure. And we decided to go for, with VMware for all our DTA environment, so the test and acceptance environment. After several years, it, uh, we uh, grew, outgrew our uh, uh, storage capacity and we needed to upgrade. So we, uh, we changed the EVA with a forklift upgrade, so to another EVA. And uh, we also introduced a new version of uh, VMware. Uh, again, a year later, we thought everybody was ready to uh, go to uh, uh, use production. So, uh, Everyone used the DTA and everyone's confident it should work on production also. So we started with the bronze servers. That were the servers are not mission critical for us. Um, that was a great success. Uh, and last year we started a new project to virtualize every gold and silver system we have. And that means every mission critical and priority system we use for brewing, packaging and distribution. Uh, just the latest news is that last weekend we migrated uh, one of the last uh, warehouse management systems that's also virtualized now and it's running perfectly. Where are we going? Uh, we are looking at the end of the year, we're going to vSphere 4, of course. Uh, that's the main thing. And last year we uh, decided to uh, choose for another storage, uh, storage uh, uh, solution. solution. <laughs> and we chose Compellent. Um, well, this is something where uh, Lucien comes in. He can tell about the choice we made and uh, why we did it. Okay, Mike, thank you. Well, I will tell you something about uh, the project itself, the whole migration, and uh, why we choose comp Compellent in the first place. Well, we really needed to uh, look for other solutions, because uh, especially in the, the two main sites, Zutewoude and Den Bosch, we had some serious problems, especially uh, the support costs, because after three years you pay an enormous amount of money for support from HP. Uh, also, uh, we had our capacity problems and also experienced uh, uh, severe performance uh, issues in Zutawada, so that meant that we had to take action uh, fast. Also, we had uh, we were stuck on the EVA 5000, uh, which uh, didn't allow us to upgrade to a newer version of uh, VMware, and also we couldn't use uh, Windows Server 2008, which uh, uh, was very high on us on our priority list. Uh, furthermore, business continuity is on the plan for uh, early next year, so we wanted to have a solution which could provide us that. And uh, also because uh, Heineken is, uh, has got a new, well it's not really a project, but uh, uh, the hunt for cash within IT Heine Heineken Netherlands meant that we, we want to uh, reduce uh, IT costs as much as possible. So, and another point, problem was that uh, we had a major issue with reporting from our uh, current SAN infrastructure. Um, why did we choose for Compellent? Well, it, oper it operates with every operating system, and that's very, uh, very important. It's one solution that fits really everything. Uh, that's what we experienced as well during the migration. Uh, we uh, could uh, start with uh, replication uh, early next year. That's also very important. And we needed a high-performance high solution. Um, what it eventually meant, uh, why we cho chose for uh, Compellent, that it's excellent value for money. Uh, the fluid data concept really was uh, a concept that what we can, uh, can use and uh, give us high flexibility. and. Um, one of the major uh, pros is that the, the excellent reporting facilities is, uh, well, I've never seen a better uh, reporting uh, 
functionality inside a project such as Copellant. And what is also very important that we got 24-7 uh, proactive support. And that's something you uh, never get for free, so. Uh, okay. Well, as a result, we have uh, at least 60% virtualized. And actually, like Mike said uh, last week, we, uh, we um, uh, went to 61% because we uh, virtualized two more f machines. And the speed we are going now, it, uh, it really looks that we are in 2012, we are going to uh, for 90%. And I think it's uh, really feasible. Uh, the number of disks re uh, significantly uh, reduced, which meant lower, um, uh, how do you say that? Lower on uh, power, lower on cooling, uh, low on the rack space. For example, the EVA 5000 costs us one and a half 19 inch rack. And right now it's about 12 U's, so it's a real big difference. Um, the performance we see, uh, on all layers, not only on the uh, on the Windows servers, but also on the uh, AEX systems, we see an uh, enormous uh, improvement regarding uh, performance. We did we did have to do some uh, uh, optimization, but with the support of uh, Copilot in the in the last months, we had an excellent result, and we even have a, a much better performance than we had ever had. So. Uh, and because uh, yeah, we are finally using solid-state drives, because we really needed that for um, a SQL a reporting uh, server, which is very uh, business critical. And uh, in the old, on the old EVA, we uh, we reached um, performance for about 20, no, 35 minutes for a report, which needed to be ready before a certain time. And now we even got times uh, under 20 minutes. So let's see uh, how fast it really uh, is. So. Um, we are uh, next week actually the, the final uh, virtual machine will be uh, migrated from the old VEVA to uh, Compellent and that will finalize our migration on both uh, breweries and so far no disruption whatsoever so we're very pleased perfect so that's uh, that's our part of the presentation thank you Somebody talks out of the sky now, right? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> the, 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 quest, the question was, uh, with all the savings he's got in his data center, can he lower the cost of Heineken beer for everyone? <laughs> a, new, a new kind of Heineken light, then, right? Yeah. yeah we could do that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not up to me. We really want to thank you guys for sharing that story. I mean, it just hit all our bullets about, uh, you know, the future built in, performance, flexibility, uh, fluid data, VMware, Compellent working together. And we're just really, really excited. And we appreciate you sharing your story with uh, our, our, our viewers and our, uh, our customers and our uh, prospects out in the audience here. Thank you yeah, very thank much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. We're going to stay live. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Todd, thanks a lot. It's really fun to meet you. you. Let me know when you come to Minneapolis. Yeah, we'll do eat a dinner or something thanks like that. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Good job. Really good. Great story. Okay, so, so we're going to go back to uh, SiliconAngle.com's coverage, continuous coverage live here at uh, VMworld at the Cube. It was a great story. Thank you guys for, for sharing you. that with us. Uh, uh, So we're back live. This is Dave Vellante from Wikibon.org, and uh, we've got Silicon Angle's continuous coverage. Thanks to the uh, Silicon Angle team for allowing us to use this great space, have this uh, press conference live. So I had uh, some, some follow-up, if, if we could. Uh, you know, Phil, you and I have known each other a little bit. You're, you are the legend in the storage business, you know, so great job. And a legend putting, in my own mind, putting right? Compellent and some others, so, so putting Compellent together. I, so so I, some follow-up questions for the Heineken folks, if I could. So you talked about the migration from the EVA to the Compellent. And migration is a real pain point for a lot of the customers that we talk to in the, in the Wikibon community, and I, I suspect you're no different. How do you expect migration going forward once you've sort of migrated to the, the thin provisioning, that environment that that Phil described, the virtualized, thin provisioning environment. How will migration change going forward? Well, because right now you're mi migrating a lot of uh, physical machines to, uh, the new uh, to the fluid uh, data uh, storage. 
and in the future yeah it will be 90 percent at least for us will be virtualized and if we would ever migrate i don't know if we should because uh, we were told that compellent lasts for at least a decade <laughs> The, the, the future, the future is built in with compellent. Yep. So yeah, but so even migrating from a, you know one array to another, right? I mean, at some point, you know, you're going to replace arrays. There's, Phil's going to build, and Larry Asman going to build more, more efficient, you know, storage. So when you migrate to that, those new systems, what do you expect to be different, or if anything? Well, the experience you have right now is that uh, migration is really easy. I mean, right. the the compatibility with all operating systems. Uh, works very nice. Yeah. So, so we have clients that tell us that it takes them, it costs them $50,000 to migrate. Now That's I don't know lot. if you've ever quantified anything like that. Does that sound reasonable to you? or? No. When you take That's planning it. and everything else, this is, these are guys using traditional arrays. When you take planning into consideration, yeah. it takes oh. a long time, six months. You're not, now, what you've seen, if I understand it, is, is much faster, much simpler, um, much more cost effective. Yeah, we, sorry. Yeah, when we look at our uh, plant in uh, Den Bosch, we migrated in total in three weeks. That includes the planning and uh, all the uh, the process for uh, migrating it uh, to the uh, new component storage system. Yeah, so our data, like I say, suggests that it takes about six months on average for a traditional no. you know, array. Um, no. Another no. question is... So that, that, that doesn't sound very fluid, does it, Dave? No, <laughs> it's not. This is uh, next gen, I guess they call yeah. it, Phil. So the other question is, is what are you guys doing in terms of uh, DR? Um, are you, I know, Phil, you guys have some innovative yeah. technologies there. Have you guys started to take advantage of those? Can you talk about that a little bit? Not right now. Uh, one of the enablers we had for, uh, for Compellent was to use uh, Compellent for uh, disaster recovery. Uh, what we are planning to do in the end of the year is to, uh, to create a business continuity for our uh, two major plants, the primary in Soutewoud and the secondary in the Bosch. Uh, both sides already have the Compellent storage system. And uh, our planning is in uh, the first quarter of next year to introduce the DR between the two sides. So, if you had to do it over again, would you do anything differently in terms of this project? Um, not really. I mean, the strategy will be the same. Yeah. Because we choose, we chose for offline migrating because we uh, really need to have consistency of the data and uh, the highest performance available during migration, and that meant that we shut down every. VM or a physical node uh, before migration. And that uh, assured us that we could migrate all machines without any flaw. And that's what happened. Yeah, you have to keep in mind that Heineken is a 24 uh, seven business. So uh, asking for a maintenance slot is only for t uh, twice a year. So we can only use twice a year a maintenance slot. And one of these slots we used for migrating the uh, Zutavau sto uh, storage. Can you talk a little bit more about that, that 24-7? I mean, what's, what are the real business drivers that are, that are sort of mandates for you from an IT organization standpoint? Well, when we look at the, uh, the brewery process itself, it's something that you, you cannot stop. So uh, all our automat automated systems uh, are driven by our IT infrastructure from the, the Windows servers normally uh, spoken. Uh, they keep to have to be uh, kept uh, up for 24-7. When you uh, un interrupt the process, uh, the beer goes bad. Let's say something like that. Um, it, it's the same goes for all our packaging and all our distribution processes. When uh, our system goes down, uh, that means that one packaging line cannot run. It costs us 12,000 euros an hour when one line is down. So. And, and we so have 12. <laughs> and we have 12 <laughs> in <laughs> Zutabout only. Uh, uh, a very competitive business you're in. And yep. you, know, you just can't afford that. Uh, you know, Phil, I want to, if you can uh, talk about this a little bit, and then I have a follow-up for the folks from Heineken. There's a lot of talk today about big data, right? Data warehousing and business intelligence, and we're seeing the analytics side of a lot of organizations really gaining influence in, in terms of decision-making. Are you seeing that in, in your customer base, that the whole data warehouse, data mart, is that ex starting to explode for you? Oh, oh a absolutely. If you look at the, the, the growth in data, it's, it's happening in mul multiple ways. One is, uh, not only collecting all the data, but then having ways to analyze it and uh, make business decisions on it. And you know, I would say by far the majority of our customers, that's a major initiative is to do the whole data warehousing and, and make something out of that data that they're, uh, they're keeping in their, their storage system. So how are the, uh, to the folks at Heineken, how are you using business analytics, uh, data warehousing, data marts, how, how does that fit into the whole infrastructure here? Good question. <laughs> is it? Well, it's, it's a uh, difficult question for me to answer. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's just not, not something that you guys have visibility on, is that right? No. Uh, not no. your areas? I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, it's just, you know, there's a lot of discussion uh, around that, as you, as you know, Phil, 
And um, I'm sort of curious as to whether or not clients are going to actually virtualize that, that big data, because you know, it's very performance in intensive. And, and uh, so we've got some more you know, sessions this afternoon. Um, another question is maybe, maybe anybody who wants to jump in here, what do you guys see as the big sort of disruptive technologies on the horizon? I mean, you're seeing things like flash, um, obviously thin provisioning and other you know, simplification technologies. Phil, maybe start with you. What, what do you see as the big disruptors that people should be focused on? Yeah, I think on the, uh, you kind of look at two different areas. If you look at kind of the uh, hardware side there, there's a revolution going on. If the whole connectivity side with you know, 10 gig iSCSI, FCOE, 8 gig fiber, InfiniBand, you got a lot of choices coming there, a lot of flexibility. On the drive side, you're going to see smaller disk technology, SaaS technology taking over, and then solid state. And um, that's one of the uh, core concepts of Compellent is to try to have an architecture that will be able to incorporate all those technologies as they come out without having to throw away your old models. So for instance, the, uh, our customer Heineken, a uh, year from now, when those new technologies come out, they're going to be able to insert that new technology side by side with what they bought this year from us and uh, not have to worry about throwing things away or starting over or doing a forklift upgrade. And we get a lot of customers that at those insertion points where they have to do those upgrades to take advantage of that technology, will uh, we'll grab the compelling technology and, and insert us in there instead of their incumbent vendor. On the software side, I'll tell you, there's just a, uh, you're going to have to manage the data much, much differently here. And it's got to be much more flexible to fit into cloud type architectures, uh, provide quality of service. You're going to need to have things like automated tiering. You're going to need to do it at a block level, we really believe, it, to get the efficiencies. You're going to have to find ways to uh, eliminate all the waste that people have there. Uh, I was kind of interested to see if they had any uh, data on, uh, on their, their migration, but we usually see customers when they migrate from legacy systems to us, it will reclaim with our thin uh, thin import here, you know, 60 to 70% of their space that was wasted before they're able to reclaim it and uh, have it uh, for use there. But just a lot of innovation on the, the whole cloud and, uh, you know, continuous operations and uh, those types of, uh, of flexibility options. Well, well, how about that? When you guys migrated from, you know, the tr traditional arrays, did you, I know Compellent has uh, what we call at Wikibon the hero report. Yes. You know, and I think you guys may use that term as well. I think <laughs> we might have stole it from you. Um, so, but. You know what I'm talking about, the Hero Report, which shows uh, like allocated versus written storage, which is show, shows you how much storage you reclaim. And it's, yeah, Did you take a look at those metrics? Absolutely, because uh, one of the major things we had in our previous storage is that we, we had no reporting possibilities at all, no facilities at all. Uh, we constantly had to uh, rely back on other parties to, uh, to investigate and analyze our data or performance issues. Uh, what we can do now with Compellent is we look at their progression reports and all the other data we have available so we can make our own decisions and analyze where the problems may lie or where we may uh, have to expand in the future. So are you finding that your storage utilization you know, uh, uh, increased dramatically? Can you talk about that a little bit? Now what we have seen is that uh, because of the thin provisioning we have uh, saved about 30 to 40 percent of our disk space. Uh, what Lucien told us before, we uh, decreased about 60 percent of our uh, right. uh, physical disks in total. So so what does that mean for, 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 for you? It means you have to buy less storage, right? So it lowers your, your CapEx. And I know there's all these other OpEx savings, but right off the bat, you're, you're uh, saving, well, right? Well, not only the, the, st the less storage we have to buy, so the cost, but we also are looking at the green IT for uh, our data centers itself. We look at how less, the, 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 the less uh, uh, machines or uh, hardware we have, uh, the less energy we have to consume, and the less cooling we need. So this is one of our so, enablers. So what did you do with that savings? Do you, do you find new applications to buy m more storage, or do you put it elsewhere, or wh where's, that, where's that money go? No, no, uh, the, <laughs> the, the bonus pool for IT, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, sure. No smart <laughs> commercials, no, <laughs> I don't have an idea, sorry. You gotta you give it back to the business, is that how it goes? Uh, that's uh, totally true. We are a non-profit non uh, IT organization within Heineken itself, that, that means that uh, we charge the customers exactly what we pay for everything, so. You do chargebacks? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Um, have you been doing it for a while? I mean, many, well, many customers don't because it's a pain, but... No, what, what we do is uh, when we uh, charge customers uh, on a yearly basis for the number of servers they have, the number of storage they're utilizing, uh, we're not so far that we are also charging for the, uh, the processor power of the utilization of the VMware environment. That's something that could be uh, enabled in the next years. Um, so we only charge them for, uh, for, for the normal uh, maintenance and the... Uh, the hardware investment. And how long have you been doing the chargebacks? Has been for a while? Or? Uh, I think about five years now. Okay. Yeah. Was, that a, was that a difficult process to put that in? Was it organizationally a, a pain or you just sort of did it and No, it, it went just fluidly. They all accepted it. How have things changed since you put in the chargebacks? Have, have you seen any impact uh, or 
you know, in uh, perception from the business? Or? Well, what you can see is uh, normally they would ask, for example, for a, a simple non-mission critical server. They ask for a uh, not only the production server, but also a development, a test and acceptance, acceptance server. And what you see, because they are charged for the servers now, uh, they are very reluctant, reluctant to see uh, if it's really necessary. And with VMware, for us, it's now possible to have just the uh, production environment. And when we uh, they use a development test or acceptance environment, we just clone or create the one so they can use it. You know, maybe one last question for the folks from Heineken. And then maybe, Phil, you and I could stay on and talk a little bit about Compellent's business and okay. share with our audience you know, some of the business aspects, you know, the guys that are out there and, and maybe don't know as much about the company. But the question I have for Heineken is, what would you say is on Compellent's uh, to-do list, you know, what are the th kinds of things, or even just the industry in general, what do you want to see um, out of the industry or generally or maybe out of Compellent specifically that would help your business? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Lower prices? Uh, that, that, that's yeah, that's good. always. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Thanks, wait, come Dave. on, these guys, all they've been doing is lowering prices, right? <laughs> what, what industry lowers prices faster than storage? Come on. <laughs> No, I have no idea, sorry. Yeah, so things yeah, are good. Everything's very good for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm mean, very confident. Yeah, it's, and, uh, it's so boring sometimes talking to customers. They don't have problems, you know, I get the same uh, theme. Right? That's yeah, true with compelling good. customers, it's, yeah. I we do have, do have problems, but uh, yeah. all of them have been solved by compellents very adequately, so. Really? Okay, so just more performance, program. you know, more, more capacity. Yeah, more capacity. What we can yeah. see is uh, we're growing on the uh, SETA tier at the moment, and that's exactly what the uh, co uh, component also promised us. So uh, in the future, I see that we are going to expand on the SETA disks. Uh, what we're also looking for is some of our high performance systems um, could, be use, uh, could be using the uh, SSD tier we have at the moment. We use it only for one of our systems that is very high IO intensive. So in the near future, I think we could also uh, upgrade or, or uh, implement more of the SSD technology. Actually, maybe, uh, maybe another follow-up on that. So do you see that a lot of customers I talk to and people in the Wikibon community are talking about a, a two-tier, sort of tier zero, and then tier three bit bucket, they call it. Yeah, right? yeah we have three tiers. And, and, and so do you see those tiers collapsing into two, or do you see that three tiers continuing? No, when I look at our own situation, I think the three tiers will continue to exist. Uh, especially because the high performance tier is a very expensive one, the SSD tier. Uh, we only use it for the real high performance applications and not for all the other applications. And the uh, fiber channel, yeah, we just need it for all the business applications itself. Uh, and we it uh, drips down to the SATA disk for the storage. We actually, history. sorry, we actually don't use the data progression on the, on the, the highest tier, only no. between the fiber channel and the SATA uh, tier. Okay, so how does data get on that highest tier? It's just uh, we uh, put it on, and it stays on. You you, yeah. you, you migrate it. You to deliberately the migrate yeah. it to exactly. How do you determine what to migrate there? How do you, you just know? <laughs> no, but if you, uh, you mean access uh, patterns. I mean, how do you determine what 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 to place there? What to place there? Well, th that's the the measurements. Uh, they were taken before we had to migrate, and that we found out that the the load on that specific server was so high we couldn't put it on the fiber channel uh, layer because that meant a number of extra uh, potential disks and uh, the, uh, the solid state drives would give us and the performance and the number of uh, disk space, so. Yeah, that solid state really, if you want sub millisecond response time, you got to yeah, do solid exactly. state to we do it. That, and that's, yes. that's what they did for that yeah. one big application. Yeah, so, so okay, so if I could summarize, you see the, the multiple tiers staying for a while, and maybe even getting more granular. Yeah. We haven't talked much about the cloud. Uh, you, you consider that maybe potentially for a backup or disaster recovery as yet another tier? It could be a possibility, yeah. yeah. We're not looking at it at the moment, but it Great. could be a possibility. All right, well I want to thank the folks from, uh, from Heineken for coming on and the folks from Compellent for hosting that. Phil, you and I are going to stay, okay. if that's okay, talk a little bit. So you guys are you know, free to go, and enjoy and the show. Thanks. And thank you very much. Appreciate and I, I want to thank, thank you guys too. Thanks, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Right. Lucian. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. Yep. Great stuff. Well done.